Hello, everyone. Good yeah. afternoon. So we are going to give it one more minute so that everyone can log in before we get started. Just give us 30 seconds more and we will go ahead and get started. Hello everyone and welcome to the conversation, a virtual fireside chat and music with CPAs, a collaboration with the Accountants Club of America. In a minute, we'll get to meet our CPAs. First, I am Oruma Hayes, moderator of this session and founder and managing director of Hayes CPA, a New York City certified women and minority owned business. A little bit of fun fact about myself, I enjoyed running and I actually got to complete the 2010 New York City Marathon. So now let me introduce you to our esteemed CPAs. Rumbi, Rumbi Petrozello. Let me go ahead and bring Rumbi on the screen. Rumbi Petrozello. <laughs> Say hi, Rumbi. Hey, okay. man. Nice to be right. here. Great. Rumbi is a senior director consulting at Ceremonies where she works with global 500 organizations to build cultural change strategies to maximize their diversity and inclusion efforts while generating positive business results. She's currently serving as president of the New York State Society of CPAs. Rumbi is the first woman of color elected to serve in that position in the organization's 125 year history. Rumbi is a past president of its Queens, Brooklyn chapter, and she's also a past chair of its diversity and inclusion committee. Rumbi has been recognized and she's been honored for her forensic work and as well as her DEI work. She has been interviewed by numerous news outlets, including the New York Times, New York Post, and CBS. Welcome and thank you for being here with us today, Rumbi. Hey, Rumbi, thank you for having me. Absolutely. Great. Let me introduce Peter, Peter Frank. Peter Frank is a partner of Showman Local LLP. He has been advising individuals and closely held businesses on accounting and tax matters for the past 40 years. In addition to being a practicing CPA, Rumbi is an active volunteer in his profession. He is currently serving as president of the Accountants Club of America, where he and he has also served as a member of the Council of the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants. Peter is also a past board and executive committee member of the New York State Society of CPAs, and he has served as president of the Manhattan Bronx chapter. I must say a position that currently I am privileged to hold. Outside of his profession, Peter is a current and past board member uh, of a number of non-for-profit organizations, including Savvy Ladies and Manhattan Neighborhood Network. He has a bachelor's degree in music, and with that behind him, Peter has been writing, recording, and performing music for most of his life. Peter, thank you for being here. Oh, so glad to be here. Hello, everybody. Hello, Rumi. Hello, Rumbi. Great. Great. Thank you, you guys. <laughs> it's so good to see you guys. So, you know what? I, I thought about doing this um, session because I love CPAs. I enjoy learning from CPAs and hearing their stories and their journeys. And I thought, what better platform? Um, what, what can I do to share um, the experiences of CPAs with other CPAs and other students Folks who might be thinking about this profession and they might just think, oh, it's a numbers um, profession. Uh, what are the other things that um, people can think about? So, Rumbi, I want to start with you to get the conversation going. When you were in school, uh, high school or college, wherever, did you know that you wanted to become a CPA? No, not at all. <laughs> I think um, going through um, high school, even college, I went to a liberal arts, liberal arts college. I went to Mount Holyoke. And so um, uh, accounting wasn't something that was talked about a lot and definitely not the, the actual difference or, or definition of a CPA. So that was something that actually was brought to my attention um, 
after I graduated college and started working at a bank. And my um, uh, the CEO of the bank uh, called me into his office one day and suggested that as a career path for me. Nice. So, uh, and then, um, so I'm going to come back to you and follow up on that uh, and how you're finding the conversation, um, the career path so far. What about you, Peter? Did you know when you started, um, was a CPA, was, were you a numbers guy? Well, yeah, I've always been a numbers guy, but uh, I was never interested in being an accountant. My father was a CPA and an attorney, and it was the last thing that I ever wanted to do. Uh, uh, and it turned out I was pretty fortunate to have a father who was an accountant. Uh, I finished college and I spent a number of years just playing music in New York City, uh, trying to figure out what it was I wanted to do musically. And right about 1979, uh, I'm showing my age, um, I had gotten an apartment and I was in two bands doing original music. And my real goal was to be a rock star. Uh -huh. um, and uh, I wasn't making very much money. And the stuff I was doing to pay the bills musically, club dates and, and other things, wasn't giving me enough money to pay my rent. It was a whole $250 a month um, in Manhattan. Uh, my father offered me a job. It was just before tax season. It was December 1979. He says, I could use you in the office because you know what we do. And I said, okay, great idea. I would work three days a week. Um, and I started to uh, enjoy it, find it interesting. Uh, three days a week worked out very well. Um, and, but I really, you know, this is before computers. We had no personal computers yet. Uh, tax returns were done manually. Um, we used to, in the off season, when it wasn't tax season, we would um, head up work papers and put them in the file waiting to be used when the tax returns would be prepared, you know, come uh, March or April. But uh, that's how I, uh, I came to this game. And then I went to graduate school to uh, study accounting so I could take the CPA exam. Interesting. Thanks for sharing that, um, uh, Peter. So so we always say that um, you share that your dad was, was um, you know, there were CPAs in your family. And so I want to ask you, Rumbi, um, were there CPAs in your family? Did you know of, of CPAs before you, you know, you went into this career path? Uh, so, sorry, right. sorry, so, I did that. Okay. My apologies, because okay. I, it's like when Peter is talking, I don't want to, to, to like, I, you know, Peter's so interesting. I didn't want to interrupt him, but um, yeah, I, I, um, I knew about accounting sort of in a in a very um, abstract way, and there was no one in my family who was an accountant. Um, my father was a geologist, and my mother sort of she 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 her graduate uh, studies were in education, and she was a a bureaucrat, I guess, and. Um, so went into college, had other plans of what I wanted to do. But um, since I have been a CPA, um, the number of uh, CPAs, structured accountants, uh, you know, whatever is relevant in your um, area has grown. I now have a family full of um, CPAs and, and chartered accountants. And it just, you know, when Peter was talking, it made me think about it because um, you know, as, as as I know, you know, Rume, when people talk about um, the CPA profession, it is found it has been found to be what is called a generational profession. So, I some really high number, like probably more than eighty percent of CPAs have a family member who is or was a CPA, and often that's how um, uh, CPAs come to this. But I'm thinking now that we're having uh, events like this that you're hosting, um, or Rume, we're we're going to get the word to spread far and wide um, and it won't just be people running away from what their fathers are doing. <laughs> we might get people to sort of uh, sort of come be that first CPA in, in their family. Absolutely. Thanks. Uh, yeah, we we'll definitely want to get the word out there um, with, with everyone. So um, 
Uh, Peter, I'm going to come back to you. I want to, I'm really looking forward to listening to your music. I want to hear some live music. So we promise our audience that we're going to get some live music. Um, so you said you, your dad hired you. And, and so tell me about your path. Um, you know, you will have this, um, you've had a lot of leadership roles um, in your career, as well as a lot of volunteer um, positions at, as a board member serving um, to help the profession how did you rise up in within the profession what um leadership what soft skills helped you along the way in your journey in, in this um with the um with the cpa career well i uh, i always like to uh to talk in public so that uh, <laughs> that'd be a little easy and being a bit of a performer though back then i had not put in many years yet as a musical performer, that all helped. Um, you know, part of what, just to jump to, you know, when I started as an accountant in 1979, no personal computers yet for another year or two. Um, the personal computer then came out. We got one in the office and I really took to it. And in fact, it's part of what encouraged me to stay in accounting because it took away the drudgery of having to add up numbers in long uh, green paper sheets, you know, long columns of numbers. That's what we did um, before uh, the spreadsheet was invented. Um, but computers helped me to really enjoy <clears throat> um, the accounting profession. The other thing that I really enjoyed was uh, the people, the clients, uh, the circles that I traveled in. Um, there were no accountants. I was you know, friendly with musicians, artists, actors and the like. And they were like, you're an accountant? You're so normal. I can talk to you. Uh, and I kind of liked that. And I started doing tax returns uh, for for people uh, on the side. I think I charged 30 or $50 back then. Um, but as I became more adept at the personal computer, and I, I started to become involved at the New York State Society of CPAs uh, and got on committees. And my father would encourage me there. Um, and I really enjoyed that because I uh, I enjoyed the interplay with other accountants to talk about the things that we were learning and doing. And throughout the 1980s, as the personal computer really grew uh, in usage uh, for accounting firms, I began giving uh, seminars uh, for the FAE. Um, and I really enjoyed that. And that was just great. And it was great to you know, teach other accountants about this new thing called a a personal computer, this new thing called email, uh, and the, then the internet. Uh, and um, it really got me more involved in the teaching aspects of, of being an accountant. Uh, and I really enjoyed that. Eventually, um, in more recent years, uh, taking part in some of the society's um, connections with WISE, which is an organization to help accountants teach at the high school level uh, to encourage people to learn about the accounting profession. Now, I don't know if I answered your question. Oh, absolutely, you did, Peter. Thank you for sharing that. Um, so yeah, talking about teaching, um, uh, we definitely appreciate all of your efforts, sharing your knowledge. That's something I always enjoy doing and I enjoy learning from fellow CPAs and also sharing my, my knowledge with fellow CPAs and with students and, and um, you know, Things of that nature is always good. So, Rumbi, let me come to you and um, can you share with us your your path? Um, you know, Frank was talking about how he started to give CPE lectures uh, with FAE. Talk about your path. Uh, let's say in either with your um, your former one of your former employers or with the state society. Your first leadership role, either in business or at a volunteer position. How did you? Um, handle that position you know what are the skills that you should have that someone should have going into a leadership position in either at work or at a volunteer um um position so um so you were as you were talking i was thinking which story shall i tell and there are so <laughs> many which i guess i'm fortunate to have but um i i want to talk about my my journey New York State Society of CPAs. I first um, joined the State Society. It was soon after uh, Sandy. Um, well, actually, probably joined a little before Sandy, but got became active 
after Sandy um, hit New York. And um, initially I come in, I sort of, I joined the state society because, you know, I was told that it's good to join your, your, your state society. Um, and I didn't really know what to do after that and received an email encouraging me to sort of um, people to volunteer to help at an event. And so I went to the event with no expectations. Um, and even then, um, again, like to, to Peter's point, I met really interesting people, people who were looking to help um, others who'd been impacted by the storm, figure out um, you know, sort of what, what to do with their various tech questions. Uh, and uh, I was asked to return to yet another event, and I did, and, and it sort of snowballed. But um, one of the things that I, I have found out, which I think is, is great in terms of um, leadership guidance is when you join the state society, even though we are all CPAs, um, we're all very different. And um, being part of committees, uh, sort of chairing the DNI committee, being president of the Queens Brooklyn chapter, getting onto the statewide board and, and, and now as president, um, it is it is very important for me to um, be able to listen to the various um, different voices for for very for, for for two very important reasons. I think um, through listening to others, I'm able to um, hear very good ideas because <laughs> I have learned that I do not have all the best ideas, um, and um, there are a lot of members, we have a lot of very talented people, a lot of experienced people, people with different viewpoints, um, and you have conversations and you come about with sort of innovative solutions to your challenges. I think also being able to listen to the various voices helps me um, be more thoughtful um, and more sort of uh, uh, mindful about how um, I interact with our various members and how um, I'm, 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 I'm dealing with the various challenges. I think ah, Peter was <laughs> was chatting. I'm um, sorry. So I think those are the things that I have learned that that um, being a part of this, definitely being a part of the New York State Society of CP. Um, has gone a long way, to, I think, to making me a more thoughtful and better leader in other spaces, just because of just all the things I learn from the people and through the people that are here. Okay. All right, great. Um, one second. Um, do, can you hear me? I think you can hear me. All right, great. Thank you, uh, Rumi. <laughs> All right, so I was trying to bring all, all of us on screen. So thanks for sharing that experience with us. Rumi, um, can so, I add something to what Rumi said? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so one Please. of the things I love about this profession is the people. And I find that accountants are very giving uh, and really willing to help each other. And um, it's really made it very enjoyable uh, being part of this profession, being active um, on committees, at chapters, um, uh, th there's so much that we need to know. It's uh, it's 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 a difficult profession. We, we need to be versed in a lot of things. Our clients expect us to be, um, uh, you know, Renaissance people, know a little bit about everything, uh, and having uh, the ability to not just go to textbooks and research materials, but be able to talk to both people at your firm if you have other accountants or at the society. Um, for help and to to learn from and with is, is a great thing. If I could just put a quick plug in for the Accountants Club of America, we're a little bit different. We've been around since the be early part of the 20th century, but it was formed as a social club, not as a place for uh, gaining technical knowledge, but a place for people who were active in the profession. They used to call movers and shakers, managing partners to get together Back in the old days, it was it was men only, and they'd get together and have a cigar and a brandy and sit in a big old chair. Um, we've changed, thank goodness, from that. Uh, and we've also grown to not just be a membership of CPAs, but also other professionals. And we're really about networking uh, amongst accountants and professionals not networking to get business, but network to understand how we each practice and how we can help each other practice 
um, in the uh, uh, and not just not just technically, but um, you know, with uh, with other people, with the business world and the like. And of course, the pandemic has changed that interaction um, in the last couple of years. But um, it's really uh, it's a wonderful thing. So anyway, yes. Thank you for that. So uh, I actually, I think this is a great time for us to have our first break and get some music going. Um, Peter, oh, are you ready to, sure. this is something like, uh, when did you start, um, when was the first time, when did you start playing? What was the first time, how young were you when you picked up your first musical instrument? Well, my first musical, so if I can give a quick history on my music, I started playing clarinet in fourth grade uh, and played in the school band and then switched to saxophone. And my bachelor's degree is actually on saxophone um, as a performance major. Uh, and I, for years, played in groups as a saxophonist. But when I was 10 years old, 1963, the Beatles came out mm -hmm. and I wanted to sing and play Beatles songs. My grandfather got me an inexpensive guitar. And from that point on, I learned to play guitar so I could sing songs. So nice. I followed a path of woodwinds for a serious study and guitar for just being able to strum chords and sing along. And in recent years, I've taken up uh, songwriting uh, and recording. Um, and that's as a guitarist and as a singer. So here, I'll play, a, I'll play an original song. Something awesome. Called Whiskey Willie. All right. Oh my 
my goodness. Wow. That was totally you pulled awesome. Some, you pulled some old pictures up. <laughs> well, one of them, the first one, I was playing saxophone at my older daughter's wedding in Israel. Oh, nice. And she hired a klezmer band, and I played with them. That was really fun. That was great. I was very lucky to be able to do that. Awesome. What did you think, Rumi? I totally, I was, you didn't see me. I was off screen, but I was dancing in my office. <laughs> no, I was, I was, um, I was getting, you know, very, very, very vibey. I, I, there's a point where I was like, I think I know this chorus, but Tisha sounds so good. I'm not, yeah, not going to cry. My songs ideally are a little bit catchy. I like uh, a chorus with a hook. Yeah. I like I, it. I, I like great. it. Right. Yeah. So talking about songs with a hook, um, Ruby. So um, I previously I asked you about you know your leadership skills. I mean your first job, uh, leadership um, job. Have you ever dealt with? Because I know this is something that I've gone through and I still go through now. And I know that other CPAs most um, likely a lot more. I think a lot more women go through this than than men. And Peter, you can uh, chime in after Ruby goes. But have you ever dealt with um, um, imposter syndrome and? Um, and how did you tackle it if, if you've ever if you if you've ever had to deal with it? You know, that's a that's a very good question. And it's it's interesting because um uh, I think um like a maybe I want to say maybe a year ago I was involved in sessions where imposter syndrome was a topic that came up very often, especially when related to um women in the workplace. And I think more so than, um, at least in, in my experience, um, more so than feeling, um, I guess, like an imposter myself. I, what I have come across often is um, maybe other people thinking that I might be an imposter in a space. I think the two things are very, very much aligned. Um, uh, not necessarily thinking that um, people might discover that, um, you know, I don't know, maybe I'm not as good as they think they are, but um, sort of w being in a space where perhaps um, is the sense that people don't think that I can deliver, that I I'm, I should be in that space, that I am smart enough or good enough and feeling, um, and it's more sort of a, perhaps trying to battle with a, a sense of, um, am I going to have to push even harder to get them to believe in me and will that help, will that work? Um, am I going to sort of burn myself out in this journey to be, um, I guess, to, to prove myself, so to speak. Um, but it is, it, is a, it is a very real thing. And I think often as well, when we're going through our journeys, especially if, um, if you're trying to sort of develop and get better and, and move spaces, what is going to happen is you're going to be stretched into a space where you're not, where a space that is not new. And I think, I think um, me, the confidence to be able to do that is um, the fact that I um, am very fortunate to have um, a really great support system. And I think that's what I would suggest to anyone because um, I'd say absolutely everyone or at least anyone who is smart on this planet um, will find themselves somewhere where they are not clear or they don't know everything that they need to do but what you what you what is what is what is helpful is knowing who to ask because nine times out of ten there will be somebody else who you can turn to to give you that kind of guidance so that you can succeed um, in you know in those new in those new places and um, so not necessarily not feel like an imposter but just realize that we're all on a learning journey yeah great thank you for sharing that um yeah absolutely i think we all go through um you know sometimes it's not necessarily coming from us it's coming from the other um, parties that we're, we're interacting with and and how they view us and how they're interacting with us um peter have you had to deal with such a thing? And if not, um, can you share some of the soft skills that you that's your go-to place, your go-to source every time you um, that has helped you along the way? Like, what soft skills do you do you constantly go to as you um, you know perform your professional functions? Well, let's see. First of all, just to add on to what Ruby said, the support system is. It's so important in so many things in our life. 
uh, and in uh, our profession, uh, it's it's very important. And I think it exists and exists in a lot of places. And people need to reach out, uh, being part of a community, being part of the society, the accountants club, whatever it is, uh, email lists. Um, there's so many different ways that you can connect with people to uh, to help you out. Now, soft skills. I think uh, being a musician has helped me develop soft skills. Uh, I've always been uh, in my life an avid reader, and that uh, probably more so in the past than uh, than even now. But uh, that that's all helped because you know I think to be a trusted advisor, which is the phrase that's that's uh, thrown out about us as accountants for our clients. And I think it's pretty valid because we are the ones that they seem to trust uh, more than many other professionals they deal with, and rightly so. Um, we need to uh, understand lots of different things. We don't have to know all the answers, but we have to understand the questions. Um, soft skills also include uh, the ability to uh, explain yourself be it uh, verbally or in writing. And in writing is really uh, important now in different ways. It's not just uh, being able to write a formal letter, but being able to get your point across uh, in, a, uh, in an email uh, and uh, being helpful that way to our clients. Sometimes they just want a quick connection uh, and a quick answer um, and that gets them to the next place. Um, other soft skills. I don't know. What else is a, what's a soft skill? Um, I know, right? It's so funny because um, I feel like sometimes soft, soft skills are the most important skills. But um, as Peter was talking, or even like with you, or me, I think um, people tend to uh, understate the importance of interpersonal skills in our profession. Um, I remember... I remember the first time I met each one of you because you made an impact and we, we were able to just speak so easily. Um, and I, with Peter, for instance, like when we connected, I think um, late last year, I don't think I'd spoken to Peter in years, but um, we got on the phone and we just kind of chatted, I'm, I'm sure. Until, like like, friends. Uh, <laughs> I know, until our spouses were like, you need to get off the phone. We have things to do in our in our real lives. But I think those those things are are really important. And especially since the pandemic hit, um, I hear over and over again, and it has been my experience that um as trusted advisors, like our our clients, the people we interact with, they come to us not just to ask us questions about their financial issues. But um, they trust us and they come to us to talk to us about themselves or to feel that um, maybe the world is not about to explode or to get that sense of like security. And so I, I really think that a really, really important, absolutely vital aspect of the work that we do as CPAs has to involve our ability to interact with people in many different ways. Awesome. Talking about interacting with people, I saw you were going to say something, Peter. You you can jump in. Let me ask well, my question. A, Go ahead. I say that's that's kind of the fun part about being an accountant is the mm -hmm. relationships uh, that we have with clients. Um, first of all, in public accounting, getting to see so many different kinds of businesses, um, it's always been very exciting just to learn about a new business. I had got a call today from someone, and it's a another new. Uh, digital business, you know, something you wouldn't have imagined a few years ago. It only exists because of the internet. Um, and then, I mean, just little things like helping to explain what the issue is with taxes between states when you don't even know what state you're operating in. It just makes it exciting. And if you can be helpful, uh, even in an initial discussion, uh, people are very happy and um, it's, uh, it's enjoyable and you get to learn uh, look, lifelong learning. We learn about the technical aspects of our uh, profession. We also get to learn about what other people do, and therefore we learn more about the world. I think accountants are really very um, well versed in understanding the world, uh, and I think uh, it's a great thing. Awesome. Um, so, talking about um, interacting with other people, uh, so. What, have you ever had to overcome obstacles at work? You know, sometimes, let's say, 
uh, Rumbi, you propose an idea and it's you you get pushed back against it uh, and then you end up you go for it how do you overcome obstacles from your place of work so that uh, you you know you have a brilliant idea or somebody else hijacks your idea and runs with it um have you encountered such things at, at work and if so how did you overcome it and were able to achieve whatever you were going for that goal you you set yeah so um because you've mentioned you mentioned two things that i've i've had to to navigate um the last of i guess the last one because i think that's the shorter answer is um i think if um having which i think is also a frustration that is shared by many people having an idea uh, which apparently is not heard and then somebody takes your idea and it is taken as as a great one by who this other person who seems to be heard more than you are um and I think, you know, what I have benefited from at times, and I think is just sort of something to just um, to people is um, in the room uh, amplifying voices that have the ideas that maybe other people are, are not here. So somebody else saying, oh, you know, that was a great thing that Rumbi came up with um, and being able to do that for, for other people. I think it also helps in time create a culture where people are um, hearing ideas and being able to give credit where the credit is supposed to be given for an idea. Um, but the first aspect of having an idea that perhaps um, is not necessarily embraced initially is something that happens all the time, especially if um, you know, ideas tend to be new things, places and spaces that people have not yet been to, right? And so to a certain extent, these ideas involve taking risks and not everybody embraces risk um, very readily. And so what I have um, found uh, that I at least try to do, right, you, you, in order to get something to happen, sometimes you have to get other people to buy into it, to be able to get it to, to move. I find myself sort of sitting back and I think about my idea and I think about, well, um, what are the benefits of, of its success? What are the elements? What are the people who could be involved in bringing it to fruition? And then with those various things, how do I have the conversation where um, what I'm saying speaks to the person I'm having that conversation with? Because I think often when um, there is resistance to something, it is because I guess, how you're seeing it, which happens, right? We all see life and things in different ways. How you're seeing it is not necessarily how the other person sees it. And so sort of thinking about, well, how do we keep having this conversation? So we keep, we think about the different points of view. So we think about, um, you know, I, I I don't know if if we're talking about the roller coaster. Maybe some people like being upside down, right? So we'll talk about the upside down part of it. And then if you're me, I look forward to the end. So maybe you're like, it's only two minutes of like the biggest scare of your life. But it's again, sort of trying to think about how do we make it um, work for for everyone and get everyone to sort of understand and see the benefit. That's great. Can I add, add to that? Yes, please do. Sure. So, uh, yeah, you hit the nail on the head in so many things. And I think, you know, accountants, uh, on the, the negative side, a little bit, accountants tend to be a little bit conservative when it comes to change and, and new things. Even though, as a profession, I think we've embraced technology and, um, and even, uh, you know, going paperless. Uh, better and more than other uh, groups and organizations. Thank goodness, because we were able to operate during this pandemic remotely, um, at least those of us who were paperless or mostly paperless. Um, we could. Uh, and um, I know it worked out fine for me. I think a lot of people like working from home. I'm in my office now. Um, I, I think it's important that uh, firms and organizations listen to all their people. Doesn't mean you have to um, take to heart and follow what somebody who maybe doesn't have as many years of experience as you, the managing partner, has. But you know what? New perspectives, new ideas um, really should be listened to. And I think it's important for firms to have open forums, both for all their partners, as well as for non-partners, uh, because there's a lot of different ways to think about things. 
and there's uh, there's great ideas out there and people come from different walks of life um, and I know because of my involvement in various accounting associations be it AICPA uh, state society you know I come back to my firm with some ideas that uh, I've heard from other people or I, I learned from presenters at great events and um, they should be listened to and, uh, and maybe you learn something um, and I think that's uh, it's a recommendation I have, but if you are someone with an idea and you don't feel anyone's listening to you, well, keep, keep trying. Uh, I love that. Keep trying. That's it. Never give up and don't take no for an answer. Go back and go back and go back. Um, what do they say? So it's not, about, no, it's, it's not yet or something. Yes, so, exactly. Right. Except if you say no all the time, or if you say yes all the time, then you should say <laughs> there should be sometimes <laughs> that you should say no, because then you'll be so overstretched. Um, Peter, so I know you're a CPA and a CITP, right? Um, so can you, when did you decide to get the additional certification? And um, what has that added to your professional career? And um, I, and I also know I'm combining a lot of questions now because I, right. I know we only have a little bit of time left. You serve a variety of different clients in different industries, um, entertainment, um, international clients. Is there one industry you love more than the other or, or um, is it all the same? Well, let me let me take the first part of that. So CITP is okay. Certified Information Technology Professional. Uh, it was a credential that the AICPA um, attempted to develop uh, quite a few years ago. And the idea was to, it was the marriage of business and technology, um, especially in the early years of the personal computer. Um, accountants started to become uh, pretty well versed in their use and there weren't as many technology companies out there uh, to help us. And it was part of what I really enjoyed about practicing as an accountant. And I mean, I built our first network in our offices in the 80s um, and I was the I was the tech department early on until we hired somebody. Um, <clears throat> we then took my for, my small firm merged into a larger firm. There was a full time tech person, um, but the technology um, was important because accountants are involved not just in taxes and in auditing and accounting, but understanding the workflow of a business to be able to help advise um, better ways to do things. Uh, and understanding technology uh, is very important there. And that's what the CITP credential was about. Um, in recent years, it's more been uh, a good discussion point. As somebody <laughs> asked, what, what is it for? And I'll, I'll tell them what it represents. Um, but now, now I forgot the, the second half of your question. Oh, what, I, what do I enjoy doing? So uh, actually, I, at a point in my career, I was looking to develop more of a technology consulting aspect <clears throat> to my profession. And it worked out for a while, but my firm, my past firm, wasn't so interested in that. Uh, and uh, But I became involved in the International Association of Accountants that we were a member of. Uh, and there's my, uh, my soft skills uh, coming into play, managing partner suggested that I might enjoy being involved in that. And I, I grew to love it. And I got to meet people from all over the world, got to travel different places to our conferences. And I really became interested in international taxation. So that's really my interest right now. I do a bit of entertainment uh, consulting and the like. My firm does a lot more of that than I do, but it's good that I have some experts here to help me. But on the international side, that's been how my practice has grown a little more over recent years. And that's very exciting. Um, awesome. Good to hear. Um, so, Rumbi, what about you? I know in addition to being a CPA, you're a CFF and a CFE. And now you are on the diversity track. So can you tell me, talk a little bit about your journey in the profession and the different certifications and, and, and um, you know, this passion of yours right now, because I feel it. I listen to you. I'm excited every time I hear you speak. Um, please share, some, share um, some of that background with us. Thanks, Arume. I think um, I was talking to somebody last week and I, and I think I said to them, um, I think even as a kid, I was told that I asked too many questions all the time, just always wanted to know everything about everything. 
Um, and within um, you know my journey, I actually started out um, in in audit, public accounting. I, I started out in audit before I moved into worked in industry for a bit, but before I moved into the forensic accounting. And um, off for me, the what drew me into forensic accounting um, was being able to solve problems. I mean, and, and you do like sort of going in and thinking about like, what is the, um, the the challenge here? What is it that I'm trying to resolve or look into or get an answer to? And I found that in the forensic accounting. And so, um, you know, became a CPA was doing that and then decided to um, specialize. So CFF stands for Certified in Financial Forensics. And so that is, I'm sort of taking um, forensic accounting and really, really focusing on the accounting aspect in the world of forensics. And then I am also a CFE, which is a certified Ford examiner. So that's a more sort of general overview of um, like, you know, how one approaches and and works with with Ford. And then to your point, or more recently, I have um, moved move to uh, the diversity of machine inclusion space. But what I am very excited with when it comes to the work that I do is the work that we're doing is, is data driven. And so we're going in, we're looking at, at um, data within organizations and using the data that we come either you know, directly from um, the people within the organization or looking at other aspects of how um, the, the sort of the culture of an organization works and, and using that specifically to work with the organization to try to transform culture to be cultures where um, we are all feeling included, where we are, where, where um, spaces are more equitable. Um, because we've been talking since we started about the value of interacting with people and all people are quite different from each other. And so um, the only way we can fully benefit from every person that we come across is by being open and being included and making them feel like they too can step into that space and share what they have to share. Because as Peter was talking about, right, if you're a managing partner, but nobody thinks that they can tell you anything, then you're never going to benefit from any of the people that you're hiring because you're not hearing them. And so um, I think for me, as I journey through this, this is what's important. But Throughout my career journey, what has always driven me is um, feeling like when I wake up every morning, I'm doing something useful. Right? I, I have like a mission, I have a goal, and I and in every step that I've taken, I just feel like what I'm doing in, in everything is bringing a benefit to the community that I'm in. You know, it's it's, it's the public part of it of, of certified public accountant. Absolutely, I love that. Thank you for sharing. And I want to stay along that. Um, that I want to stay in that lane for a minute. So, and, and stay with you, Ruby. What advice would you give to a young female CPA or a, a minority um, CPA who wants to move up the um, corporate ladder, wants to move in to get move into the C suite, get into the C suite? or um, serve on corporate boards. Um, you know, there are lots of challenges out there. I, and I know a lot of boards right now are expanding their diversity initiatives to try and, and, and get more minorities and female on their boards. So is there any advice that you can give to um, a, a young CPA or a, a minority person that wants to do this? Absolutely. I think I'm here before. Grow your networks. I think it's um, these communities that we, we have are the communities that um, even help us to, um, I guess, imagine what you might not have been able to imagine. Um, you know, the, the Accountants Club, the State Society of CPAs, um, the AICPA, all of these places are the places where you meet people people and you build relationships. And I think it's important for us all to know that um, our, our networks are often what helps us get to places. And sometimes it's somebody who's somewhere who can um, you know, say, oh, I'm, I'm in this place. Do you want to join me for this event so you can meet people? Sometimes it's just somebody who's going to give you that push of encouragement and say, yeah, why not? Just just go do it. Go, go talk about it. I think um, support is is very important and um you know Arume, you're you're sort of talking about this and asking me to give advice because we're talking about people getting into spaces where 
um, there are not a lot of us, right? It's it's and so um, in addition to um, having communities that um, I guess we have affinities with, those are the easy communities to build and to create. It's also important for us to step outside our comfort zones, right? Because that's that's where all of this, it's about stretching. So stepping out of your comfort zone and, and making a connection with somebody new. Um, sometimes if you're not afraid to do it, um, ask someone who knows someone. Like, I email you all the time. <laughs> you know, it's like, do you know this person? Or can you get me, or maybe you can help me do this. And I think this is this is how we do it. And this is how we get into these places. Um, it can seem intimidating and scary, but um, I have found people are so much nicer than you imagine. Like a few months ago, I was someplace and people were talking about New Yorkers. Of course, I took it personally, and I'm like, uh, you say things. Have you talked to people in New York? I know every time, like I've been lost in New York City all the time, even when I was new to New York City. There was always somebody who was going to help me. I've been places, I've been lost. The first time I got to New York City, um, I was supposed to, drove into um, uh, uh, the big bus station, the Port Authority. Okay. And, mm -hmm. and I, I was coming from Massachusetts and I come from like a small bus stop in Worcester, Massachusetts. And I got to the Port Authority and was supposed to be meeting my uncle um was completely overwhelmed um my cell phone wouldn't work i was downstairs um his when i think we were missing each other couldn't find him and i remember sitting i was sitting on stairs in the port authority and it was like 11 o'clock at night in new york city and they were just probably i felt like the entire world was around me and i was lost i'm like am i going to have to sleep on these stairs in this place and <laughs> And there was a, a, a young man who came up and he said, you know, are you okay? Um, and he, you know, and I said, I'm trying to call my uncle. I'm supposed to meet him. I can't get through to him. Um, and then I think I was in a bit of a panic and he was like, well, who else do you know in New York? And I remembered that I had an aunt who had called me a few weeks earlier. So I, I he said, well, you can use my phone. Cause I just, I had just, and he, and then he turns out he was a cab driver and he drove me over, didn't even charge me, drove me over to my aunt's place where um, I did not have to sleep in the Port Authority, thank goodness. <laughs> <laughs> I think for me, it was a, it's a great lesson in just, um, yes. you know, having that space and that belief in, 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 in the good nature of human beings. I think more often people are, are nicer and want to help. And especially in our profession, I think sometimes people say maybe CPAs always want to help. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with you more. So we're, drop, we're, we're getting really close to the hour and I know um, a lot of people might need to jump up. So I want to just do a couple rapid fire questions similar to, I don't know if you guys used to watch, um, what was his name? The Actor Studio on Bravo, James Limpton. I love these questions. Uh, so I have a, a couple um you know, snippets, um, you know, changes on these questions. So really fast, and then I'll start with you, um, Peter. Uh, of course, I know the answer to this, but you have to give me another another profession. So if what profession other than the, your own right now, the, your CPA profession, would you have liked to do? For you, I guess your second profession would have been a musician, right, Peter? But apart from that, any other, is there any other profession that you would have liked to attempt? Um, it probably law. Law? Okay. Yeah. Rumbi? <laughs> well, when I was a teenager, I wanted to be a backup singer. <laughs> <laughs> I can see you doing the dance <laughs> and the music. I yeah, need I a backup music. singer. Yeah, you can be Peter's <laughs> backup singer. There you go. Absolutely. All we'll right. Come back here and we'll do this again. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. All right. Next one. What is your favorite podcast? If you listen to podcasts, I know I'll start with you, Rune, because I know you listen to a lot of podcasts. Do you have a favorite one? I guess uh, the one that brought me in. Wait, wait, don't tell me. That was the one that brought okay. me into the world of podcasts. I love that. Peter? So for me, so, so I really love, I love history. I love New York City history. I love the history of the streets and the buildings. And there's something called the, the Bowery Boys. And it's two, uh, two guys who um, they'll talk about, they'll pick a topic like the Ansonia or the Flatiron Building. And then they're doing a banter back and forth where you're getting some great history, great interplay. And 
It's fantastic. I really love that. Awesome. Thank you. So my next question, if, what was the last book you read? Or if it's not the last book you read, what's a, a really interesting book that you've read that you would like to recommend to our, our, our viewers? And why would you like to recommend that book? Or what, so, what, what captivated you about that book? The last book I read, just actually finished reading it this weekend, was The Lincoln Highway. Um, I read it because my mother-in-law recommended it, um, and it's a really good book. Um, I, I learned something. First of all, I didn't know such a thing existed, The Lincoln Highway, and it is apparently started off, it starts in Times Square and runs all the way to San Francisco um, and was built. And before, when it was first built, you had to take a ferry across the um, but then the Lincoln Tunnel existed through which the, it, it's really cool. And the story of the book is is also really captivating, but that's the last book I read. Awesome. Peter? Well, I can't remember the name of it, but uh, there's a book that is, oh, I'm blanking on the name. I was trying to look it up. It's about the, uh, um, it's, uh, it's history. It's, it's nonfiction about how the different founding fa fathers that uh, we had in the formation of this country, how after they either left office uh, or in their later years, how they were very skeptical. They didn't think we were going to make it. Uh, I'm glad we made it. <laughs> and the reasons why uh, we weren't going to make it. And right. um, there's some really enlightened stuff in there. Awesome. All right. Last question before we have the last, uh, um, Peter is going to sing us out. He's going to play uh, another bit of music for us. And before you start the music, Peter, one last question. What was the last movie you saw? And did you see it on the big screen or the little screen? I haven't seen any movies in a while. It's true. Sometimes it's like CPAs work a lot. It's like it's been crazy nonstop. I know we've all been busy. But have you had a chance to go to the movies lately, either at home or on the big screen? Okay. That's interesting. I, I was trying to think if I've if I've watched a movie lately, and I was what I've been watching. I just finished watching Succession, and then I also watched a three part series called. That's funny. I did too. Yes, yeah, so that's great. Uh, I, <laughs> and then I was yeah. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead, Peter. No, I was uh, actually uh, about a month ago. I had come down with with COVID, even after three uh, uh, vaccinations, but it was very mild. But I had to stay isolated. And I stayed in my room. My, my wife just kind of fed me food under the door you know, and said, <laughs> stay in there. I proceeded to watch all the seasons of Succession it's uh, oh, from wow. beginning to end. Nice. And okay. I really hated it in the beginning, but it's because you don't like the characters. No, you don't. <laughs> but it's They're really horrible. interesting. But it's, <laughs> but it's really interesting. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't so. been to a movie house a while I, I miss the popcorn more than anything i yes. miss the popcorn i i do too i think the last movie i went to a movie the last time i went to a movie house i saw in the uh in the heights when the, when that first came out um so i saw that in miami that was a while ago so it's uh we're right up on the hour so i'm going to have um i want to thank you rumbi for being with us today uh, this is my first linkedin live uh, i want to thank you for coming on and being part of this program. And I want to thank you, Peter, as well as the Accountants Club of America for uh, working with me on this. Uh, and so Peter, uh, all of you, um, thank you for tuning into the program. If you like what you uh, witnessed today, what you saw today, please let me know, put it in the chat box, send me an email, send me a message. Let me know if you'd like to see another production and I will work on it, but I need to know if you actually enjoyed it, okay? <laughs> so Peter, thank you all for being here. Peter, yeah, over Thank you, to this is great. And I'm glad to thank learn a new, new tool, the Restream. Uh, yes, that the is studio good. is we're not using Zoom here. And it's pretty good. I kind of like the, the layout. Um, but thank you, Rumi and Rumi. It's always a pleasure. So, what I music I really enjoy playing, um, I guess, is sometimes called Americana. It's a kind of mixture of country, blues, folk, uh, story songs, and the like. And it's what I like, kind of like playing the most. This is not an original, but this is um, something that. Uh, it's a it's a country blues that uh, I learned from Taj Mahal many years ago, uh, and um, it's called Fish and Blues. Uh, I bet you go fishing all the time. I'm a going fishing too. 
Bet your life that you'll speak wise. Gonna catch more fish than you. In official bite, you got to pay. Here's a little tip I would like to relay. I'm a fish body. If you got good bait, I'm a going fishing. Yes, I'm going fishing, and my baby's going fishing too. My baby brother's about to drive me right out of my mind, saying I go fish. But I'm talking down to my favorite fishing hole. What do you think that boy did? Do? He pulled a nine pound catfish out of the pond. He was jumping up and down because he was real gone. And if it's back, if you got good bait, I'm a going fishing. Yes, I'm going fishing. Come on, he was going fishing too. Well, put it in a skillet, mix it up with wine, get a real taste of stew. Oh, my mom was in the kitchen cooking all day long. Think I'll go back to just what I was doing. Singing Memphis Pads, you got good things. Here's a little tip I would like to relay. Yes, I'm going fishing, and my baby's going fishing too. Well, I'm going fishing. Yes, I'm going fishing. My baby's going fishing too. One more time. Well, I'm going fishing. Yes, I'm going fishing, and my baby's going fishing. I lied. One more time. Well, I'm going fishing. Yes, I'm going fishing. My baby's going fishing too.